You hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this blog ad-free. Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike, and this is a pin from Modern Fuel. I first reviewed stuff from Modern Fuel a year or two ago when I did their mechanical pencil, and that thing is a built-for-life mechanical pencil with all metal parts and custom interiors and all that jazz. And so when Andrew reached out and said, hey, would you like to check out the new Bolt Action Pen? I was like, yes, I would. This was recently on Kickstarter and now is available on their website at modernfuel.com. So thank you very much, Andrew at Modern Fuel, for sending this out uh, for me to review. It has been great fun. So let's take a look. This is the box. It's a little magnet box. I dig a magnet box. I'm a fan of that. I also like that it's slim because this is a box that I'm going to want to keep track of. It is not going to go in the box of boxes in my attic because... There's extra stuff in here. So you have this very nice cork in, like, cork block in here, which uh, is is great. I think it's a great way to present a pen. Uh, and also the cork block like comes out. So you can, I guess you could just put this on your desk if you wanted to. I don't know. All right. So you have all these extra little parts and we'll get to those in a sec. Let's get to the pen first and then come back to the extra bits that make me keep the box around. This is the Modern Fuel Bolt Action Pen. It is a very sleek, minimalist, future tech sort of design. Uh, this one is in stainless steel. It also is available in bronze, copper, and titanium. On the website, it says that the barrel of this pen is two parts. You have the barrel and the nose cone, and then they mate those together, and then they mill them. So they are all, they are all you know, fitted together perfectly. Here's the thing, though. I can't find a seam. It's got this brushed, uh, this brushed feel and look to it, and that can hide seams sometimes, but I tell you what, nothing, nothing comes loose here, and there's no seam. I don't know if these are JB welded together or, I don't know, Loctite or whatever people use for that sort of thing, but this is, as far as I can tell, this is seamless, which is really impressive. Also, that brushed feel makes it very nice to hold on to. It's not slippery. I don't feel like I have to really hold on to it, which kind of hurts your fingers when you do that with metal pens because that brushed feel gives me just gives me enough grip that I, I feel like I'm in control of the pen and I don't have to worry about that. As for the top, you have this little knock right here, and uh, that's, that's kind of it. Uh, there's no branding on here of any kind. Not even on the very tippy top here. You just gotta look at this and be like, all right, I know what that is. This is the bolt action mechanism here. You have this knock, which doesn't actually do anything. Uh, it just looks good and also makes the top flush when you are uh, when you're using it. So pretty nice. Uh, but when I handed this to a friend, they said first, this looks awesome. That is very cool. And then went like this went. Oh, oh, okay. All right. So this is a very intuitive sort of action. And this is an extremely good bolt action. It's extremely fidgetable, like, like you know, no misses. It's very, that's very good. That is a very good bolt action. Well done. You can see there is just a little tiny divot right there that this carrier slots into. So you don't have to go all the way down if you don't want to. You can just kind of, you know, move it. It's, it's very nice. Uh, so that's, that's what's going on here. Now let's get into these parts and stuff on the inside. So what are all these parts, you might be wondering? Well, it's because this pen can take a really wide range of refills, and so you gotta take it apart sometimes. This is the little wrench for taking it apart. You can see those little tiny teeth in there. Mate to this, and then you can... I was looking at the screen and lost it, there you go. You just unscrew it thusly. Uh, I don't tend to use that, really. I, I just use my fingers because uh, well, I used this the first time I unscrewed it, but after, since then I just tighten it to finger tightness. There are enough threads here that it's not going to just come apart. I haven't had it come apart yet in my time using it, even just like carrying it in a pocket and such. So once you remove that screw that is also the bolt, you have this bit, which is just kind of a carrier with a set screw. And this set screw lets you determine how much point will come out of the end. So if you're a person who writes very vertically, perhaps you don't want very much point. If you're a person that has more of a, an angle to your hold to the paper, maybe you want more point uh, coming out just to make your writing angle, angle comfortable. So it has that function, which is pretty cool. It also functions well to uh, let it accommodate many different refills. So tons of different refills. And that's what the rest of these parts are for. So you have an extra spring here, you have a spacer, and then you have an extra long set screw. So this pen comes default with a Pilot G2 refill, which I, 
I didn't uncap or use because I have a bunch of other Pilot G2s in black going right now. And uh, so I decided that I was going to get a little wild and I grabbed my Sarasa clip. Well, first maybe I put in this one, which is the Pilot Juice, which I think is a little bit better than uh, your usual G2. Then I decided I'm going to use this Vintage Maroons Zebra Sarasa clip situation. And so that's this one. Now, when I did that, I had a little bit of tip wiggle and you get that little bit of like rattle. Sometimes you like you, you write with it and it goes click, click, click because it's got the metal here against the metal of the nose cone. Uh, and I don't like that sound at all. Where'd my spring go? There it is. Whew. Put that there against the magnet. Uh, and so I just took a little piece of tape, wrapped it around there, fixed that problem. That I get that with a lot of pins, and I, I don't like that noise. And so I'm very picky about that noise. And so I just wrapped that. It works perfectly well. And so I had a different color gel, which was very cool. You can also use things like Parker style refills, what they call in uh, Europe the G2 refill, which is not con not confusing at all. So I get asked a lot what my favorite refills are in this style. And so here are two that I like a whole lot. I always reply that the jet stream. Uh, Parker style is straight up my favorite. I think this is the best. It is the one that I always recommend. Not everybody loves it, but I think it is the best. This is the uh, Uni SXR 607. This is the 0.7 millimeter refill. Uh, it is smooth. It is fine enough without being too fine. I just think it's kind of the perfect uh, ballpoint refill. On the other end of the spectrum, in terms of size, you have the Schneider Slider 755 XB. This is an extra broad ballpoint. As you can see here, there's a huge difference between the 0.7 here and the XB. Like, it's very different. The other thing you have to watch is that this nose cone is quite a lot larger. It's, it's a beefier nose cone than there is on the rest of the Parker refills, and so it won't work with every pen, but it does work well with this one. It's got enough room in that nose cone to accommodate it without having any problems. So when you use a Parker-style refill, you're going to want to use the longer set screw because this is a much shorter cartridge and you need that extra length to make it fit the pen. To change that set screw, all you have to do is just, just hold this and just unscrew this. You can just take this one out. This is a little short one for these gel refills. Right there. I'll put that back in to the depth that I prefer, which is about three screws showing. Yep, looks good. All right. Now, if you're going to use something like a uh, Fisher Space Pen refill, you'll also want to use this spacer. Oh, and the extra springs. This is a skinny spring that is better for for these pens than uh, than the one that it comes with. This, this goes over there perfectly. Fits very well. It's a nice job. Uh, this one is a better size for these larger gel refill tips and such. So a couple of different springs a spacer, different set screw. It's kind of, that's that's what's going on in here. And it, uh, it works great. Um, what am I doing? These don't go in there. That goes in there. These go up here. All right. So to put it back together is very simple. Put your screw, put your, put your, you're going to want a spring, else otherwise it won't work. Drop that in there. Line this up. Tighten that down and away you go. That's all there is to it. Now, since I know what depth I like, uh, I may have misjudged. I may be a little bit shy. I like this to have a little bit of a smoother transition just aesthetically, but uh, it doesn't matter much to my writing style. And uh, there you go. All right, let's look at this next to a bunch of other pens and take a look at an accessory. Actually, let's do the accessory first, and that's this. This is the stand. I didn't even know that the stand was a thing uh, until this showed up in my PO box uh, after I got the pen <laughs> even. Uh, so this is the Modern Fuel stand and it comes separately, although you can add it in a drop down menu. Uh, yep, you can add it in a drop down menu. Uh, there and these uh, oh this one's actually on sale stainless steel is uh, 50 bucks right now which is pretty cool so uh, oh they're actually all on sale bronze copper and st stainless steel all on sale 50 bucks usually 70 bucks so if you want one of these go and grab that I'm not sure how long that uh, how long that'll last so this is uh, this is a pretty darn cool stand and when I got it it doesn't come with any instructions and so I wasn't honestly sure how to use it and I was a little bit at a loss I was like is it supposed to does it balance like magic on that point. No, does it? That doesn't seem very elegant. Having it lean, um, I, I, I was having a little bit of a problem, and so I looked at the site because that's what you ought to do, and uh, it works thusly. <laughs> it goes it goes in this bit like this, and it actually is super effective. I was surprised by just how well that works. Um, lots of pins actually will fit in this. I was kind of surprised by that as well because there's not like a lip or anything going on. 
Just just hold your pen kind of magically. I don't know if I'm going to do that because this is Cerakote. It might get scratched. But like, whatever, man. Totally fits. How about this? Yeah, even that fits. This is a good stand. Way better than it ought to be. And it has this groove on the bottom, which it says on the site is for uh, putting over power cords or whatever. My standing desk at work has a problem with my power cords constantly wanting to slide off. Every time I move the desk, it's like, yeah, okay, I'm going to get dragged off. Or just it'll fall over its, off its own weight, and then you got to dig behind the desk and find the cord. It's a whole thing. Just pop this on top of there, and uh, and no problem. It'll, it'll keep it there for you. I also tested this uh, just free hanging with the big uh, USB-C block for the, uh, the, the iPhones and uh, tablets and stuff. And uh, it can support the whole weight of that thing just hanging off a desk. So this is this is a pretty heavy thing at 138 grams, which is 4.9 ounces in stainless steel. Probably heavier in the other metals aside from titanium. But anyway, it works very well. Now, what's this little groove for? Well, that's that's for things like note cards. If you're a note card user, I'm a note card user. I like a I like a note card. This is which is what I had handy, but it'll hold all kinds of uh, papers and such. Just gives them a little bit of a fold, like that. And, uh, you know, your, your phone numbers and your notes and your whatnots are right there in front of you with your pen. Cool, right? All right. So let's look at this with a bunch of other pens. All right, so here we have the Modern Fuel Bolt Action Pen on its lonesome in my little card holder here. Here is the tactile turn. This is the standard size side click, which is a bit longer. This is a fairly uh, big pen. It's also a bit thicker than the, the Modern Fuel. The Modern Fuel is a little bit on the skinny side, perhaps, at 9.1 millimeters. It's still a totally acceptable width, but a little bit skinnier than some other pens that I have. So there's the standard side click. We've also got the, uh, this is the tactile turn bolt action, which goes in the other direction. I actually think that for me, this forward kick on the Modern Fuel is a little bit, it just works with my hand a little bit better than, uh, than the backwards kick on this. Still a very fidgetable uh, uh, bolt action, but uh, different in a lot of ways. And um, I, I kind of I kind of like the forward kick on this, although that would probably be kind of weird with the clip. I, I don't know. But it uh, works out pretty well, and that's the short version of the, the bolt action. Come on now. All right, there we go. Then we've got, uh, this is the Karanda Osh 849. This is the standard ballpoint size, not the uh, big fat one that they have now. I haven't tried that one out yet. And then we've got here the Machine Era Field Pen Twist, which is uh, a little bit shorter, a little bit heavier, and that sort of thing. Now, you'll notice that all of these pens have something that the Modern Fuel is missing, and that is a clip. Modern Fuel does not do, does not do a clip on here. It is a, it is a standalone pen. It has to be on its own merits. Uh, you can have it on your desk in that holder. You can throw it in your pocket, uh, but it's going to jangle around unless you put it in a, uh, in a pen sleeve or some such. I'll often throw it. In, I'll throw it in here with like a fountain pen next to it, but that'll keep it. That'll keep it there. But it doesn't come with a clip. So if you're a clip lover, this pen might not be the one for you. Uh, oh, and one other that doesn't have a clip is the Mark One. So if you're uh, if you're living that Mark One lifestyle and you're fine with that, then this is totally fine. Uh, it doesn't have a clip, and you'll be okay without it. All right, so uh, pros and cons real quick. Uh, pros, this is a very good looking pen. It is extremely uh, sleek, it is stylish, it's got a great look to it. The seamless uh, transition here, I, if I hadn't read that this was two pieces, I would have told you, yeah, yeah, it's just milled down on one machine. It's uh, from one chunk of stainless steel, uh, but it's uh, it's not. You've also got a good choice of materials in bronze, copper, stainless steel, and titanium. Like that covers most of your bases. If you if you don't like any of those, you're not like. I mean, I guess you could do an aluminum one, but I don't know. Aluminum, I don't know, man. I think the stainless steel has the aluminum covered. It's not terribly heavy, which I like. I don't like it when a machined pen is extremely heavy. And this one is uh, this one's fairly. Uh, well, this is pretty medium. I wouldn't say it's lightweight, but it's pretty medium. All right. Um, and also, it feels like it's going to be just bomb proof. I mean, there's no there's no, no give in this thing at all. It is, this is tough. It's got a hundred year warranty and that might be short. Like what's going to wear out the spring? Maybe. I, I don't know what would wear out even on here. Uh, and also this bolt is extremely fidgetable. This is in the top, top two or three, uh, fidgetable pin things that I have going on right now. I, I dig it. All right. Cons. Um, this little cog right here, 
is just a little bit on the sharp side. You can see those little teeth, and it doesn't bother me. I mean, I've been fishing with this thing the whole time, uh, and it doesn't bother me at all. But the first time my wife picked it up and went like that, she's like, oh yeah, it's a little bit sharp. Like her fingers, I guess, aren't as aren't as, aren't as beaten up and calloused and stuff as mine. And so she was like, no, it's a little bit on the sharp side. If it was a little duller, uh, she would be she would be happier about it. And the other thing is the price. I mean, this is on sale right now for, for 50 bucks, which is not terrible, I think. It's uh, it's a very nice, elegant piece of uh, of desk hardware that works perfectly. Uh, the pen itself goes for 150 in um, bronze, copper, and stainless steel. Titanium is a little bit more expensive at 200. Uh, that is expensive, but it also is definitely in the range of uh, very nicely machined metal pens. So, like, I mean, like that's also 150 bucks, right? So it's uh, it's up there, but it's not beyond the it's not out of the realm of possibility. It makes total sense. So uh, I think for a pen of this quality. That price is high. Maybe it's not a, an impulse purchase, but it's this is a this is a really well done pen. So there you have it. Um, let me know what you let me know what you think. If you go over to modernfuel.com and purchase one of these, let them know I said hi uh, and that you saw it here. That's always helpful for small channels like me, letting people know that you uh, you saw something here and made you think, hey, maybe I ought to have that in my life. Um, if you uh, let me know what your favorite machined pens are down below in the comments, if you will, because. I love I love these kind of pens. I don't just use fountain pens. I use all kinds of things, uh, and a really well made machine pen is very, like just really really makes me happy, and I dig it. So thank you very much for watching. I will see y'all in another episode. Uh, take care of yourselves and any other people. Peace out.